Today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to be talking about Guild Wars 2 account upgrades and some general items that are going to be useful in your progression. When I say progression, I mean general account progression as well as your progression in gold making. If you want to make more gold in Guild Wars 2, you need to play the game, understand it, and then figure out what you can enhance in your gameplay in order to reach your goal in a faster manner. Reaching your goal might just be getting a few thousand gold, but it might also be getting every single legendary in the game. And for these different kind of goals, we have different kind of methods. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rank these 26 items or types of items onto the tier list and the tier list is going from worst to best about useless items so useless items are items that are not useful in your general gameplay so they're not gonna like enhance it you're not gonna play better or faster or complete uh, actions in a at a better pace these are items that you can get but they're not gonna significantly change anything about what you do. Then we have worthwhile. These are items that are good to get. Like you can get them, they will enhance your gaming, but they're not needed, all right? They're good, but you're probably gonna replace them or you're gonna do more stuff later that makes it so that they become less and less relevant. Then we have essentials. Essentials are items you should be getting, right? And you should be getting them quick, okay? These are items you wanna get early on so that you already have a head start in your Guild Wars 2 account progression. And then we have the must-haves. Must-haves are items that you will need at some point, okay? You will need them. You might not need them today, you might not need them next month, but at some point you will realize that if you don't have these, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot, right? You're gonna do less than other people, so we will want these items, they are must-haves. And then finally, at the top, we have best value. These are the items that will unlock your potential. You will not be thinking on a three-dimensional plane anymore. You're unlocking the 4th, the 5th, and the 6th dimension at once. Just by buying these items. Trust me, it's gonna be good. And to answer the chat real quick, the tartan item is the best value. We will see that in a moment. Alright, so we're gonna be doing the items in order. As they come here on the list, we're gonna place them. And I'm gonna voice my opinion. If you guys disagree in the chat, I'll hear you out. We might change some stuff around, but generally I think I'm gonna be quite good in my thinking. All right, so first coming in, we have the additional crafting license. What's that, what does that do? Well, each character on your account may have all the crafting professions. However, you can only have two active at the same time, unless you buy this. What it does is that character, you're gonna unlock it on, is gonna be granted the possibility to have more crafting profession than just the two you're allowed to use at the same time. So in all honesty, it's useless, because there is no, or well, there is no problem respecting to another crafting profession. There's no cost, there's just a few clicks, doesn't take much effort. So in all honesty, I would dare say this is useless. So we're gonna put it here in the useless list. Then we have character bag slots. What does that do? Well, your character spawns with five slots. One of them 
is the basic bag, 20 slots. And then you're gonna get more and more bags to put on your character. The bags range from four to 32 slots. So eventually you're gonna want to have more space on a character. And the only way to do so is to have either more bag slots or bigger bags in your slots. We're gonna talk about the bigger bags later, but I would say that this is an essential. Why? Because you're gonna to want to get them early on. You're gonna to want to pick one character on your account, usually the one that is either gonna be your trading post character or the one that you're gonna do most of your crafting on, mostly refining, because that takes a lot of inventory space. Or finally, you might want to do that for multiple characters if you plan on having some mules on your account. What is a mule? Well, that is an animal rather close to the donkey. But most importantly, a mule is a type of cocktail. It can either come from Moscow or London, based on you using either vodka or gin. But most importantly, a mule is a character you can store items on when you do not want to use your bank or your guild bank. So the idea is you use a mule character when you want to store a semi-large quantity of items for either later use or later relisting on the trading post. Knowingly, you can store items infinitely on the trading post and you can have, if I'm not wrong, 100 mails on queue on a given account. But at some point, if you want to have access to the items easily, you want them on a character. And that's where the mule comes in. There you go. So to me, that's an essential. Early on in your gaming, when you've got already a few hundred gold in your pocket, you're going to be thinking about which characters are mules and which character are your training post slash crafting characters. You give these ones that good old bag slot upgrade. Next up, we have the bank tab. So the bank tab, that's different from bank slots. The bank tab is 30 more slots in your bank. What is that used for? for account bound items. You want to have account bound items that you're gonna use rather often on your account in your bank. You're also gonna to want to have in there items that you might get more of rather often. So for instance, in my bank, there is all of my Black Lion items, the ones I get from winning Black Lion chests. I also tend to have in there consumables that I want to swap around on my characters. I also tend to have containers items that I want to forge, etc. It serves as the main place on your account where you're going to put account bound and items you wish to transfer among your characters. So in my opinion, upgrading your bank is going to go into the must haves. That's not something you need to do right away because you're going to find other ways of moving items around or you might, you might not actually need that many items. But the moment you start processing gear, the moment you start forging actively, the moment you start wanting to store stuff like luck from one character, putting it on another one, etc. You will need them back tabs because you'll need space, space that can be used between your characters. So this is going to the must tabs. Moving onwards, we get the Black Lion Contracts, so hunters, uh, gatherer, whatever that is. These give you gold for nothing. So you just put money in at some point, and then as you log in, you get stuff from it. This implies that you must actually log in and do stuff, right? But that's the entire point. In my opinion, these items are not useless because they're going to give you gold, but they represent 
an investment that you won't recoup right away. And in general, they are not something that is going to be essential or better to your account upgrades. They're, they're a nice plus. But they're not needed. So in my opinion, that's going to go in worthwhile. This is going to be our first worthwhile item. Massive value for account currency. Yeah, I guess... I guess we could make a difference, okay? I guess we could make a difference. Worthwhile would be the basic ones. Probably must have for the... Um, probably must have for the other ones. But it's like, it's the same icon. It's the same icon, so that kind of sucks. Ah, man. I guess, I guess we just move them to must-have, okay? They're like... They're probably a must-have at some point. Okay, I mean, let's go with the must-have then. Alright, then, next up, what do we have? We have... The Incredible Candy Corn Gobbler. Hello, what is this last item? So, Alan Comer, as we were discussing, this is the Black Lion contract. There are four types of contract. Um, I think it's season three, season four. Hunters and gatherers. Uh, just the season three one is particularly good, makes it a must have. Yeah, endless gathering tools are down there. We were going to get to them later. We did think about them. But yeah, so candy corn gobbler now. The candy corn gobbler, you give it three candy corn, it gives you a random buff. This is very good because you can get World vs. World buffs, you can get Magic Find buffs, you can get a lot of different buffs from this guy. And it's hella cheap. Much cheaper than actually getting boosters from the trading, well, not the trading post, but the gem store. We all hate spending our money. This, it would be so good if I actually had a sponsor for this video because that, that would have been the perfect moment to talk about a sponsor. Either way, Candy Corn Gobbler is, in my opinion, a must-have. At some point, this is going to make a difference on your account, whether you have it or not. So it's a must-have. Next up, we have additional character slots. Uh, this is pretty evident what it does. Best on the name. Now, best value is going to be something very different, Alan, in my opinion. Best value is going to be the, the actual busted stuff. The actual busted stuff. In the meantime, I would put... I would put that in worthwhile, I think. Right? This is the character slots. It's not needed. You can make do with your mules being upgraded to the jewels. You can make do with a guild bank. You can make do with uh, with your actual account bank, etc. The character slots are worthwhile. Like you can do that, but only if you actually realize you have a need for it. The stream is sponsored by patreoncom Majesty. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thanks to today's sponsor, all of my amazing patrons. You all want to get rich in Guild Wars 2, don't you? Well, instead of following some random advice that you take from less than subpar YouTube videos, you could actually pay only one dollar and subscribe to my Patreon. What does that give you? Well, the incredible possibility to send me messages at any time of the day and get an actual correct answer on top of all the amazing spreadsheets I have made in the past and the ones I'll be making in the future. Dollar one a month for all of this. On top of that, if you actually want to save some extra money, you can get a yearly subscription plan with 20% off. Well, I, th I think that's actually 16%. With 16% off! Isn't that crazy? Join my Patreon today and unlock your true trading potential. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Hello, uh, Fruver Badass. I swear to God, I'm not like this usually, okay? This was just for the sake of the joke. Hi, YouTube. This is actually correct. This is to put on YouTube later. I'm, I'm this lazy. But yeah, so... 
Next up, what a sellout. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. I'll take it. I'll take it. This is the only thing I can sell, right? I'm selling my own content. Good car slot in essential or most value. Once you max bank pictures collection, you don't have much choices to store items. Well, actually, at this point, I would think an alt account is cheaper than another character on your account. Right? I think that it's actually better to go for an alt account. Which is why I would put character slots in worthwhile. If you're not playing the characters, it's better to go for another account. No joke. Join the stream to hear that, OMG. Okay, okay, I'll give you another chance. Thank you. Your words bring great solace to my mind. Fomo Petus. Your account gives five, actually. This gives you one. 800 gems? How much is that? 800 gems. Uh... That's 10 euros. Yeah, that's 10 euros. <laughs> dollar or euro? What a joke. As if the dollar is worth one euro. Whatever. Uh, but like... Okay, 10 euros. For 10 euros, you can almost get an alt account. Because that's 15 euros on sale. Okay? So I'd say get another account. It's actually better value than getting a character slot. Which is why it's worthwhile. And not any better than that, in my opinion. Say that again to me. TR, it's different. It's different. You're playing them. If it's purely to store stuff... You don't need it. Why are gems cheaper in the US? Because, because, because actually the dollar is weaker than the euro. Right? You're making me doubt myself. I hate that. See? Okay, so with one euro, you get 1.13 dollar. So like... Let's say I want to get, like, let's say 100 euros worth of gems. That would be uh, 25, 25, that would be, uh, that would be 8k gems. But if I actually converted my money to dollars and bought on the American stores, I would get 8.8k uh, gems. I would get an extra 800 gems for the same value in euro. Either way, we get to the first item that I would put in best value. This is the Copper Fed Salvage Medic. And it's gonna go in best value. Why? Because three fucking coppers per salvage. This is so good. This is so good. This is like awesome value. This is an item you will want on your account as soon as possible if you do not get it you're shooting yourself in the foot and you can't complain that the, the game is not uh, enjoyable or that it's hard to make gold or whatever this is a money printer this is extremely useful this is our first best value item let's go moving onwards we have the Permanent armor repair. This is useless. And I say that despite having one. It's just that before, repairing equipment required gold. You needed to pay for equipment repairs. And when you wanted to repair your equipment in a dungeon, you had to get back to the entrance. So at one point in the game, this had some use. But right now... With the way equipment repairs work and the fact that if you GG before you die, that actually makes no sense. If your death is a death by choice, using slash GG, instead of dying from damage, then you actually don't even break your equipment. So this item is now useless, and that's a shame because I have it. Hello, Nocilia. Indeed, we do a tier list, but it's a good tier list. Also, I needed YouTube content. Just saying. Next up, 
we have the permanent upgrade extractor. The people familiar with my content will know that this is the money printer 101. This is literally the best item if you want to make gold in Guild 2. I'll never say it enough. So once again, for the people in the back, get a permanent upgrade extractor. You get to remove any upgrade from any type of gear. So all the exotics you get as drops, whoosh, remove the upgrades, sell or salvage the upgrades separately, you forge the items, whatever, every rare you get, take the runes and scissors out, forge them together, maybe get good exotic ones. This is actually profitable. All of that, a great extractor. If you also are into processing unidentified gear, this is top tier. So we put it in best value. Next up, the glyph of reaping. Like glyphs in general are good to have. Personally, the extractor hasn't been worth it. Gotta, gotta use it more then. I could pay back an extractor if, if I did nothing else but playing, okay, because I actually have a real life job, I have friends, I have people I go out with, I have social life, I have responsibilities. If I was actually teenage or unemployed, I could pay back this extractor within a week. Facts. Either way, Glyph of Reaping. Glyph of Reaping is very good if you are parking characters at specific spots. Why? Because it instance gathers everything close to that spot. So like you could use it for the wood in ore, you could use it for the flax seeds, verdun brink, etc. In my opinion, it is quite worthwhile. It is not essential to your account, but if at some point you have the gold for it, go for it. Then you made like two silver back for four salvage. Try to make 4k gold that, that way. It's only 2k right now, TR. It's cheaper. I think it's only 1.6 if you order even. Let me check. Uh, loading. Loading. It takes ages to load. Is this taking a while? Come on. Hey, bro. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, see, it's 1.6. 1.6. So it's, it's really worth it, okay? It's really okay. Like, paying 1.6k for that, that's worth it. What is it, Norcelia? What is it? My friend, tell me. This sir will gladly answer you. And sir, you joke of the year edition. I'm so funny. Uh, then we have other glyphs. Glyphs that actually give you extra items when you use the glyph. Here I took the glyph of the Watch Knight because it gives you Watch Knight's pockets. But you can use any other glyph that gives you items, Unbound Magics, whatever. These are, in my opinion, worthwhile as well. They're not needed, but if you can get them, that's value. That's extra. Norcelia, how do I use this effectively? The upgrade extractor? Well, as I said earlier, use it on everything. Everything has value. If it's green gear, you can vendor the sigils and, and runes. If it's yellow gear, you can forge what you get. If it's exotic ones, you can sell on the trading post. It's really an item that is there for everything else to get processed through it. So it's just a matter of how fast you are. It is said that professional gamers have a time of 10 milliseconds between each action. And I will not explain that any further. We then get to 20 slot bags. 20 slot bags when we talk about account progression. 
You make your account. You make your first character. You get bags from doing the personal story, doing some quests, doing some achievements, etc. But at the end of the day, you want all the characters on your account to have at least 20 slot bags. Either you buy them on the training post or you get them for cheap at Halloween with the Halloween Pale, which is the icon I have right there. I don't care how you get them, but you gotta get that. So this is an essential. You need to have at least 20 slot bags on everybody. No questions asked. No excuses. Even you, the bad student at the back, no excuses. If you didn't do your homework, you get out. Get some 20 slot bags. And then what happens? After some time, you realize that 20 slot bags they just don't cut it. Because you're going to be at some point going through entire stacks of items. Be it when it comes to opening containers, processing gear, when it comes to forging, you will want to have a lot of space in your inventory. And that is when you'll get the 32 slot bags. So the 32 slot bags, you put them on one character. I said earlier, the bag slots. You get them for that one character you've deemed to be either the mule, the trading post character, the crafting character, processing, whatever. You determine these characters and the one you're going to use for the most of your activities, you give them 32 slot bags. This is a must-have, but this is very costly. So you do that late in your account progression. After you've already gotten all of your characters with 20 slot bags, you've gotten your bank tabs, you've gotten some, some storage expansions, etc. You go for the 32 slot bags on your main character. You're going to put hundreds of gold in that. So you want to make sure it is for one character. And you get that character to the best spot ever. Coming next up, we have my dear friend, Taktun. Taktun, that's basically a uh, Black Lion vendor, a Black Lion merchant. But it doesn't spawn an NPC. This can be used Anytime. You can double click it, the window st stays open. You can move away, it stays open. After five minutes, it's still open. This is the best way to vendor anything you have on you. And while you will need to gamble to get it, if you are not struck by the extreme unluckiness, then you should be able to actually get it without parting ways with too much gold. So as a matter of fact, and I know this might sound wrong to quite a few of you, I would put that in best value. This is one of the items I double click the most in my inventory. No joke, that's best value. I do not regret having lost 3k gold for it, because it's definitely worth. Was it cheaper than the functioning worst contract? Yeah, I was unlucky. All right, next up, we have the Mistlock Sanctuary Pass. Here, I decided to go for the Mistlock Sanctuary Pass, but as a matter of fact, you could go for any premium instance. It's just that this one I really like uh, because it's cooler, it's in space, it's the background to the video right now. Uh, what else can I say? That's where all the elitists and the trading post barons go. We're just cooler than the rest, I guess. Um, however, it's not the most FPS friendly. If your computer is not too good, you can actually go for the Ember Bay one, which is very empty. Or I think there are like one or two other ones that are very empty that you can go for. And as Alan says, it also has the Fractal Vendors. For, for Fractal dedicated players, this is good. So in my opinion, that's going to be in the must-have category. It's not best value. You can, you can play well and nicely and enjoy your gaming without it. 
But this is great. In my opinion, it's a must-have. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that the, the best city, if you want to have the least space between the crafting area and the guild bank and everything, that would be the grove. I might be slightly wrong, but I would say the grove is the best place if you're just into crafting and using the bank and the guild bank and the TP. <laughs> the airship also needs a pass. That's the thing. It also needs one. But yeah, that's the way I'll go with. Then we have the Mystic Forge Conduit. What does the Mystic Forge Conduit do? Well, it's basically a Mystic Forge, but it's a countdown. You can open it anytime, you just double click it. The only thing that it doesn't do, which the actual Mystic Forge does, is that you cannot cancel the animation and reopen it easily. Which is one of the reasons why you want, when you're going quickly through forges or processing items or whatever, doing a lot of recipes, when you want to go fast, you use the actual forge well, location, either in Lion's Arch or in the specific player hubs. As a matter of fact, you will want at some point to have the personal one so that you can forge stuff on the go or forge stuff while you're at the bank, forge stuff while you're crafting items, forge stuff in front of the trading post, etc. In my opinion, that's going to be a must-have. It's 200 gold, I think, to get one. So it's not expensive, it's really affordable, so just get one when you can. It really makes a difference in your gaming. Then we have the Black Lion Bank Access Contract. In my opinion, this is not a must-have. You can play to a high level without it. But it does make a huge difference, so I'll put it in essential. Like, it's not just worthwhile. It actually makes a huge difference to have it or not. But still, in my eyes, you can play very well without it. I personally don't have one. Because I never felt the need for it. I could just buy it. I could just use it. But I've never had the use for one so far. Once you have it, you will never want to play without it. Yeah, that's why I put it in essential, right? Once you get it, you're like, yeah, I'm glad I got that, right? But if you don't have it, you, you don't really have the need for one yet. You, you see what I mean? You see where I'm going with this? So that's where I'll put it. Essential. Um, then, Black Lion Merchant. As we said earlier, the Tarkton was the Tarkton one does everything better except sell you the item from the vendor. Uh, it doesn't spawn an NPC, so you can move around with it. It doesn't disappear after five minutes. The Tarkton one is superior in nearly all aspects to the Black Lion Merchant one. So I would, and I know some people are gonna judge me for this very bold move. But I will take it and I will put it in useless. Moving on. This is the permanent hair stylist. While at first you might think it is extremely useless, it is very well known that changing the looks of your characters increases your desire to play the game. When you change the look of a character, you want to play that character. Facts. So while this might not seem very intuitive, I would put it in worthwhile. Right? It's not needed. It's alright. Okay? It's quite alright. So I'll put it there. Next we have the Black Lion Trading Post contract. This is best value. Why? I'm gonna explain it to you. Your characters, you move around with them. They are literally destroying their shoes, running around all the time between the bank and the trading post. But what they're destroying that's even worse than their shoes 
that they're destroying their knees. You're making them run so much without any warm up, without any form of stretching after. You're literally murdering your characters in cold blood by not having this item. I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. So as a matter of fact, this is going to go into best value. It is actually very useful to have it. In my opinion, it's one of the best items I have ever purchased. Anytime, anywhere, I can trade. This is so powerful. So this goes into best value. It's not something you want to get right away in the game unless you plan to do some flipping or general trading outside of a city or play a hub. Let's say you play War vs. World, you'll want to open it, do some stuff. Let's say you're a big raider, you'll want to open it, do some stuff, etc. When there is downtime. This is great for these type of situations. Or if you want to manage everything you've got in one spot in front of the crafting tables. Uh, personally, like my, my characters, they don't move away from the crafting tables. I do everything next to it thanks to this big boy over there. Next up, we have the Runecrafter Salvage Matic. This one is basically the best kit to use on Masterwork gear. This is simply the best. Unless you are actually bothering with extracting everything, then you would actually salvage the gear with the copper fed. And you would vendor the upgrades. But while you're not doing that, this is very good. So I would put it as... I'm, I'm hesitating between essential and must-have. Like, viewers, do you have any opinion of this? Do you have any opinion? Are you thinking more into a must-have or an essential? Because I'm, I'm kind of torn between the two. I would, I would probably... I would probably put it in essential. You would say must have. Yeah, I'm hesitating. I'm really hesitating. I think must have. Yeah, I think must have. But like bottom of must have, right? It's not it's not that important, but it's it's really good. Yeah, okay, it's really good. I would say essential is not something you need. Ah, I'm torn. Okay, let's put it at the top of essential, okay? Let's actually reorganize a bit. I think this also deserves to be like second spot of essential. Uh, in this order for the bottom tier. In worthwhile, I'm actually agreeing with that. In must have, I'd say... This one goes first. No, actually, bank tab goes first, like this. Then I would put this one over there, and I would put this one before the rest. Here, I'd put it like this. Yeah, I'd put it like this. Yeah, yeah, like this. All right, all right, all right. The more it is to the left, the better it is within its own category. Okay. Completely useless once you have the extractor. Yep, that's the problem. That's why it's top of essential. Shared inventory slots, best value. Why is it best value? Because you can put literally anything in these and have them on all of your characters. It's basically like having the permanent bank access, except you don't even need to click an item, you don't even need to put stuff in the bank, take them out of the bank, whatever. No, they're just in your inventory at all times. So you can put containers that you want to have quick access to, you can put uh, your gathering tools, you can put... Uh, all of the other items we said were amazing, the uh, salvage matic Extractor, TP, etc. All of this goes into the shared slots. It is best value. You should get them. Also get the discounted packs. Don't go for individual ones. Get the discounted packs. It is worth it. So yeah, there you go. We are on to our last four items. Silver-fed salvage matic So... As you play the game, you're going to get a lot of Mystic Forge stones. You can use these to make Mystic Salvage kits. We have 250 uses, which is already quite a bit. But this, this is even better. 
because it's permanent. And it's only, I think, 60 copper per roll, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, kind of kind of good, eh? Kind of good, ain't it? So, in my opinion, that's not best value worthy. Because at the end of the day, you can make do with your uh, you can make do with uh, mystic kits for a very long time but it's definitely up there in the must-haves so i would put it second like first position in the must-haves like it's it takes a while to pay itself back unless you're actively targeting stuff with it like doing stuff with that item specifically but it's really good on an account it's really good to have it you shouldn't not have it okay you should have it that's what i mean then we get the storage expander storage expander that is huge it is super worth it so we're gonna put it at the top of the must-haves right there behind the bank tab bank tabs are cooler but storage expander lets you store so much more like this this in and of itself allows you to avoid buying more characters buying them more bags buying more bank tabs buying more accounts even this is good get them if you have the gold for it especially if you're farming a lot playing a lot of content playing the game actively and not just the ui which is traders play the ui not the game right uh, if you're actively playing the game get that it's gonna make it so much better for you much more enjoyable to run around knowing that you can do a deposit all and not have a lot of stuff plaguing your inventory get this then we have probably one of the best things in the game so i'm gonna have a sip of beer and we talk about it Standing back in the chair, getting all the energy, let's get to it. This is the guild bank. Actually, this is the call the vault to me item, but I didn't have an icon for the guild bank, so that's what I went for. Imagine not having the Sunstorm one. No, we put the Tarkton one. We wouldn't put both items that do exactly the same thing, right? You do one or the other. Uh, this is the vault. So this is a guild bank. Guild bank is supra giga good because it allows you to move items between accounts. Either your accounts, like main and alt accounts, or your accounts and the accounts of others if you're trading, etc. This is super good to have, but it's pricey to get one or a lot of effort to get one with your guild so it's really annoying but still this is good approval okay so this item right there in my opinion that's in the best value and if i need to reorganize best value a little bit i would Put it now I would put it at the bottom of best value because you can you can live without it but it's really useful the moment you're gonna start wanting to move stuff between accounts you'll realize that the mail is not sufficient and a guild bank is where it's at I think that's enough intro for it finally the last item we'll be putting on our tier list today is the permanent tools so the gathering tools the sickle the mining pick and the axe these ones that we selected right there they give you volatile magic which is uh, an extra bit of currency that you can exchange for gold so that's even better for you but in general unbreakable gathering tools are the shit in my opinion these are a must-have and these are like 
a mid-tier must-have. The other items are better to have before, but this is up there in the list of things you should be getting. And with this said and done, I believe we have covered all of the 26 items we wanted to place on our tier list. Naturally, this video is going to end up on YouTube for the people who weren't able to catch the stream. If you want to see more of this kind of content, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and also make sure to leave some positive comments or actually any form of comment, I just need interaction, below the video to push me upwards in the algorithm. And I guess that it is time to wish every single one of you some happy trading and to get rich.